Oh, dear. Yay, that was The Who with Won't Get Fooled Again. Hi, my name's Adam. Hey, my name's Joe. Very nice to be with you, listeners. We're filling in for Sean Keaveney for a couple of weeks, so sorry if it's a bit of a shock if you're expecting Sean... Uh, the Keeves. The Keevener to be talking to you this morning, but uh, we're going to try and make it as easy as possible for you. We've got some great music to play you and <laughs> some fun things to, to chat about. It's a horrible, horrible morning. I'm sorry to tell you that, but you shouldn't go out. If there's any way you can avoid leaving the house today... I would try to take it. Hey, it might be gorgeous in other parts of the country. No. In fact, I was in Wales yesterday. Really? And it was raining for the Green Man Festival. Yeah. It was pouring, but apparently it's pretty sunny today. What? Am I right? In Wales? Yeah. That's no good to me. Well, you know, it's good for people in Wales. Yeah. But, I mean, London really kind of sets it. We're in London, you know, listeners, and mainly that's what you have to worry about. It's no good to any... It's no good to us if if you're happy in Wales. In London... Don't go out. That's what I'm saying. Quite right. We've got great music coming up, though, for the next uh, two and a bit hours. We've got some Susie Sue coming up, some Dinosaur Junior, a bit of Beck, and then you've got an archive session track coming up, right, Ad? Yeah, a bit of Pavement, I think. And what's it? Because we plundered the Appeal sessions, and so we've got Pavement today uh, from that. And what have you got, Joe? Uh, I've got a bit of Aztec camera coming nice, up later. Nice little bit. Which yeah. bit of Aztec camera have you got? It's a little bit. It's uh, Is it a bit. Roddy's shoes? You know, I'm going to make it a surprise. Oh, for later in the show Rocky but here Rocky. is what about a bit of uh swixy swix that's how you say her name isn't it Susie sue this is her new album this is her first solo album after 150 years in show business has it been that long it's been that long and uh finally after years of successful punk fun with the banshees she's busting out on her own and this is a track called into a swan there we go that's into a swan what does she mean by that into a swan she just she's in love with one she just she's just one. into it yeah yeah a particular swan it's not a physical thing is it uh has she bought it or does she just loiter in a local park no she's spotted one in a park really what yeah. does she like about it the uh, neck the curve of the neck the curve of the neck yeah they've all got curvy necks no but this one's different really it's, it's got a kinky it's, ki a kinky neck a, a kink in its neck. neck yeah it broke its neck at one point it was in a it was in a scene uh, uh, with Hugh Grant in About a Boy. Really? And Hugh Grant threw a prop at the swan. Is and that it... true? No. Is there a swan in About a Boy? Yeah, there's a, don't you remember there's a bit where he chucks a load of bread in, there the, you go. in the pond and he kills one of the swans. And it's, it's amusing because it's like, oh, what's he going to do wrong this time? And he kills a swan with bread, which I don't think's possible. But he gets a big stale... Hang on, right, hold, hold your horses. It's not possible to kill a swan with it's bread. Technic well... Bread expands in the gut. Yeah, isn't there, a, uh, isn't there an animal in the garden that you're not supposed to feed bread to? No. Because, what yeah, there is, there is, there is, about? there is. Because it goes pasty and inside its gullet about? it expands. No. What, worms? Which animal in the garden? What uh, are you talking about? Birds. Birds? Yeah, I they don't know. I don't bread. know. I don't know. They live on bread. So Joe was saying to me while that record was playing, that he's a little bit nervous, uh, folks, being on the BBC, because, you know, we're, we're used to sort of independent radio life. We're used to a, a rocky London station. Yeah. Yeah? We haven't really been national. I mean, I, I did some stuff on, on Radio 4, actually. Do, us, do your Radio 4 voice. Oh, my Radio 4 voice is a little bit like this. Does oh, that sound any different? It's very calm. It's soothing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But, it, you know, to be broadcasting to the whole of Britain, it's different for us. It is. And there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of things, you know, because the... I don't know if you knew this, but the BBC uh, stands for British uh, Big Castle. Really? Yes. Or maybe Big British Big Castle. Big British Castle. Yeah. And it's, a, it's the last bastion of decency in a world gone insane. I don't know if you knew I've that. I've heard that it's a castle built of red tape. Yeah, there's a certain amount of red tape holding the castle together, mm. but it's it's uh, fortified with decency, and there's a lot of things that you can and can't do, and we've just been taught um, a, little, a little bit about these things before we came on air. There's a list of words we've been handed that you can on no account say. Right. I'm only going to say these once and never again. Right. Here's the words, and make a note of them. Not only okay. you, Joe. Are you sure it's wise to say them? Well, we've got to get them out of the way. What are going to... This is the first show in, in supposedly a fortnight of shows, and you're going to say the, the, the band words yeah. in the first 15 minutes. To get them out of the way. Because right. I know no, that's, how you're... That's good thinking. Yeah, because it's that's only... That's actually clever. It's not even 7.15. Most people aren't. No one's listening. No one's listening. Here's the first word. French boy. You can't... Is that one word? It is. If really? It's, if it's one word... If it's two words, it's okay. It's okay. If it's but one together, word... But together... No. Why? 
d I'm not- I'm not gonna explain a lot of these. It's slightly erotic, isn't it? Well, there's that. <laughs> Here's another one. Yeah. Slovenly. Ooh! That's a filthy sounding word. Exactly. It's just bad. It's just not yeah. a good word. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Won't be saying that again. Here's- here's a, a- a few words now. I'm gonna say them together. Right. Wiggle, cripple, ripple, and nipple. Can't say any of those no, words. None of them. Separately or together? Uh, in any way. In any combination. How are we gonna get through the next two weeks without saying nipple? Well, look! C can I we say teat? No, you can't! I said... What about pacifier? Oh, for goodness. Move on. Next word you can't say. Mm. A couple of words. Mm. Thick otter. Thick, thick otter. It's r yeah. It's thick otter. It thick ot thick otter. Thick otter. Yeah, it's bad, bad for the yeah. Well, they're, they're very active on the on on the complaints. The, and the thick otters. Exactly. Uh, berries. Berries. Don't say. It. Berries. Don't say it. What's wrong with berries? Well, does it connect to nipples? They're similar. <sighs> don't say it. I'm saying these words so you don't dwell on them. All right. Don't all right. dwell on them. Best. Final word before we have a bit of music. Pianist. All right. That, on it, that on is no rude. account, even if you're, even if it's relevant and you're chatting about someone playing at the piano, just don't. Sorry, listeners. Uh, this is Dinosaur Junior with Crumble. I thought it was Dead Weight by Beck. This is a uh, Dead Weight by Beck. Nice one. Whoa, there we go. Beck making uh, funny little electronic. Party noises on the single version of that. Maybe that was the single. Oh yeah, look, there's another 38 seconds of those electronic farty noises. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it goes on and on. He's a Scientologist. <laughs> he got fired from doing the music for Natural Libre. Did you know that? Why? Because he didn't deliver it in time. Oh, there's right. a bit of Beck gossip. He didn't deliver it in time. No, he was late. That's unusual. That's for the a bit of guy. Hollywood gossip. I picked up when I was in Hollywood recently. And where'd you pick that up from, John? From Hollywood. <laughs> from the Hollywood gossip. From the grapevine. <laughs> The, yeah. the 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 yeah gossip bin. Can we chat to you a little bit later on about what it's like? No, you can't. Oh, please, no, you can't. Please. You would understand it. Oh. Um, hello, we're Adam and Joe. This is uh, Six Music on the BBC. We're here filling in for Sean Keaveney for the next two weeks. That's ten mornings, three hours a morning, making thirty hours of this kind of rambly nonsense. One of the most amazing things, of course, of be about being at the BBC is the access to the amazing archive of music, recorded music and sessions they have here. And uh, we, we've plundered the Peel Sessions archive for you folks. We're going to be playing a couple of Peel Session tracks every day while we're covering for Sean. And I think in just a second, we're going to uh, hear one from Pavement. But uh, first, this. On BBC Two, Bruce Parry travels to some of the furthest corners of the earth to become one of the tribe. Wow, what a reception. And they all look like they're waving. Rarely do I get the whole village turning out. They're not waving at all. They're slapping the bugs. <laughs> in the first of a new series, he spends a month with the Matisse in the remote western Amazon. This is potentially very dangerous. I've just been told to get down. Tribe begins tomorrow night at nine on BBC Two. Does it, does it begin tomorrow night at nine on BBC Two or is it all faked? This is potentially very dangerous. That's what he said in there. <laughs> He was sitting in his front room with a big cocktail, faking the whole thing. All television's fake. This is fake. This program's fake. It's good. If we could, if we had some jungle music behind what we were talking about now, we could say, This is potentially very dangerous. What do you mean by jungle music? <laughs> Goldie. Yeah, some trip hop. Yeah, exactly. That is potentially some very jungleism. dangerous. Now, here's something that's also potentially very dangerous, because, of course, amongst the things you can't do uh, talking-wise on the BBC yeah. is use swearing. Uh, talk you can't use swearing talk none what kind of a radio station is this all the other stations are full of swearing no it's the big british castle and you can't use swearing talk quite right it's a bad S example exactly so, uh, unfortunately one of the tracks that i really wanted to play on this peel session by pavement from 1992 uh, contains a little bit of low level swearing so what we're going to do joe is uh, dip it Mm -hmm. At one minute twenty-seven, this is going to be tense, and we're going to have to cover it with a word. So this is quite exciting. There's potential for a huge breakdown here at the BBC. Massive breakdown, a swearing crisis. Yeah, and we could be out the door just as as quickly as we got in. There. It's like something from one of those Mission Impossible films. It's almost exactly like you got to defuse yeah. the swear at exactly the right moment, otherwise the whole corp could could blow up. Yeah, are you ready, listeners? 
You think we can yes, do it? Yes, His yes, pavement, we do. Pavement with circa 1772. Is it 1772? 62. Oh, you 17, see, you got 62. that wrong. How, how are you going to dip the swearing out at the correct moment? <laughs> this is a disaster. This is going to be amazing. Okay, hit it, pavement. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do to you if you misbehave, Joe. What? I'm going to light you and stick a flag on you. I heard the naughty word slightly quietly <laughs> Did you? behind. Didn't you? Didn't you, listeners? It was a little... Uh, it was a very naughty word. It was the worst. It was one of the worst. The worst of all words. Because it describes the worst place of a human being. <laughs> Let, let's not get into that. <laughs> Listen, I, as I've been going on about, I was just at the Green Man Festival last weekend. Nice bit of weather there you got. A lot of rain. But yeah. but playing on, on Sunday night was Stephen Malkmus. The mighty Malkmus. Right, the bloke what we just heard. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, and I'd be interested in uh, hearing from anybody listening who was at the Green Man Festival and stayed for Sunday night. Most people were leaving on Sunday morning mm -hmm. because it looked like it was going to be the third day of solid rain. <laughs> solid rain. But um, Malkmus was playing on the Sunday evening. I wonder what kind of a crowd he played to. Four people? Five yeah. people? Uh, he was staying in the same hotel as me. Uh, he came down for breakfast between 8.30 and 9. Mm -hmm. I think he had uh, double fried eggs. Yeah. Bit of bacon. Double fried eggs? Does yeah. that mean... F uh, yeah, two fried eggs. Two du fried double eggs. is two things. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and I very nearly hit him and his entourage with my... Uh, Fist? No, car. Oh. As I came down the hill. Why? Just because they were walking in the middle of the road. And I was going quite fast. Yeah. But I, you know, avoided them. Oh, well done. So, yeah, he's... he's He's going to live. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> I could have taken him out. Yeah. I yeah. had an opportunity there to, to silence him. That would have been a disaster. Yeah. I don't, I, know what I, don't, I don't really know their stuff, personally. He's good, man. It would have been, yeah. it would, for me, I would have been angry with you. Might have improved him. If, if I'd just uh, injured him slightly, it might have inspired him to write better songs. It can happen. <laughs> you know, Robert, Robert Wyatt uh, reckons that, um, in some ways, being a crippled was the making of him. That's one of the bad words, I thought, that it, you've just said. That's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you want to text us, you can text us at Adam and Joe, uh, dot six music. Is that really right? At bbc.co.uk? That's configured in a way that no other email address has ever been configured. Adam and Joe, all one word, dot six music, with the number six, at bbc.co.uk. Or you can text us on 64046. That's 64046. I'm not saying, incidentally, that Robert Wyatt was delighted by the idea what are you saying? of being disabled. I'm just saying that because fate handed him that what card, he made the best of it. First the I'm swear word. To wriggle out of that. First the swear word, now this. All right. Now, w w we we're going to say before that um, we're encouraging people to vote for who they think has picked the best Peel Session tracks uh, throughout our tenure here at uh, Six Music. Yeah, we can get into that in a second. Let's have some kind of lanky gypsy. Cool, blimey, that's like being smashed over the head with uh, a frying pan first thing in the morning. That's very good, though, isn't it? Gogol Baldello. He was that bloke that appeared on stage with Madonna at Live Earth. What did he do? He just waved his limbs around. Anyway, uh, it's time for the news now <laughs> with story. Adrian and Harvey. Uh, that's uh, Run DMC and Aerosmith with Walk This Way. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We're here filling in for Sean W. Keevney uh, for the next two weeks, yeah? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, not weekends. Does that though. mean we have to be here on on the banking holiday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How awful! Monday bank holiday. Week. Everyone else is going to. No one's going to be listening. Don't, that's the wrong attitude. Everyone's going to be listening. There you go. That's the right attitude. That's good. Good. Glad we've sorted that out. Yeah, um, yeah we're coming up uh, to <laughs> the <laughs> the second third of our first hour. Is that the kind of information <laughs> listeners need? <laughs> <laughs> like, listeners like to orientate themselves within the hour. Actually, this time in the morning they do because it's a question of timing your departure for work, exactly. getting the breakfast in, getting the teeth brushed, uh -huh. getting the bits and bobs cleaned, the various furrows uh, cleaned before you set off <laughs> for work. Is that what you do, is it? <laughs> Clean your bobs. Well, do you not? Five minutes for the bobs. Maybe for the bobs. A couple of seconds for the, for bits. the bits. Yeah. yeah, that is exactly what I do. <laughs> don't forget, you can text us. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can on 64046. Or you can email us at adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. And if you do, please put your name on it so we can be refer friends. to you by your name. We'd like, we want to be friends. We want to be friends with you because there are only four of you listening. So we could like be really but like proper friends. Come and do the show from your house and maybe we'd fall in love. We could be super friends. What are they? Well, better friends with special powers. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we could. Could we? Yeah. Well, yeah, we could be that. <laughs> now, uh, 
session wise i was saying before that we're going to encourage you to vote for uh which of our session tracks you like best and now it's very this kind of thing is currently very complicated at the bbc because of course there's been a national scandal about the media lying and so we're not allowed any competitions mm. or to do anything in the least competitive no competition is bad pitting people against each yeah, other it's just wrong problems. in it's... in communist britain <laughs> yeah. we all have to work together now that's right i've bought in a whole lot of flipping competitions no. listeners that i uh, that i organized seriously i had the, uh, like a crap commentary competition we used to do it on the other radio show it was going to be brilliant but i can't use it can you not use it why don't you do it on me i'll do it on you because that's uh, you see, okay we, well you that's a compete between ourselves that's okay and listeners it's could, only if the could contribute yeah. in a sort of non-competitive way right there's nothing to stop you uh texting in right we can't st they can do what they want isn't that right? She's not saying anything. Our lovely producer's she, she can't be remaining drawn. mute. But if the competition somehow leaks from you and I to the listeners... That would be wrong. That's that when trouble that starts. But, but listen, here's, here's a non-competitive thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Adam and I are both playing archive session tracks on this morning's show, and we'd simply like you to text in and tell us which one you think is best. So in a way, that is competitive, <laughs> isn't it? It's competitive between us, but as right. long as the listeners aren't competing. Got you. Yeah? Yep. Got I mean, you. we don't, we still don't really understand, but, but, you know, uh, we've already played the first session track, which was Adam's, uh, pavement track, and I'm going to be playing one in a second, right? Yeah, but first, I'd like a lovely glass of Winehouse. Yes, but she's on drugs, she's on K. No. She's in rehab. She's not. We shouldn't be playing this, it's a she, bad influence. She's delightful. First beat Pete Doherty and now this. I like her. That's, that's good stuff, man. That's Tears Dry on Their Own by Amy Winehouse. This is Adam and Joe on Six Music at the BBC. Ah, uh, good times. 2001, the world was uh, changed in so many ways, and one of the most enjoyable ways that it was changed was the arrival on the scene of The Strokes. That was, that was, uh, that album came out just before the world changed. It did, yeah. Didn't it? Yeah, because they had to take the track New York City Cops off in did the States. Did they? Yeah. On account of the, the, the enormous seismic shifts in the world's political and economic makeup. A, have you seen you don't really watch curb your enthusiasm do you joe no but there's a funny episode where um there's a guy on there who's uh, uh saying that he should have special dispensation to do all sorts of things because he suffered a personal tragedy his brother was killed on 9 11 uh in you know his brother who lived in new york was killed on 9 11 he keeps on saying this and it turns out he just happened to die on that day uh, somewhere else in the city <laughs> I wasn't involved and Larry David keeps going on but he wasn't involved in the tragedy it wasn't part <laughs> of the tragedy anyway it sounds distasteful and that's one of the reasons I don't watch that program it's uh, delightfully distasteful um, so this is Adam and Joe this is BBC Six Music we're, uh, we're going to be playing a couple of session tracks this morning we've already heard one from Adam uh, uh, by Pavement they've been kind of personally plucked from the Peel files yeah we went through us. the um, went through the amazingly long list of bands that have appeared on the Peel sessions and and we picked out a few of the ones that we particularly were excited to hear so here comes my one um, um what we'd like you to do listeners is choose which one you like best now there's no reason for you to do this we're not giving out any prizes because we're not allowed to uh but it's what is it it's just a kind of a census an important national census uh to find out whether our listeners prefer pavement or the music of roddy frame and aztec camera this is my choice uh recorded at the bbc date not known unknown date unknown, unknown. so whoever was uh, organizing that recording session whoever the broadcast assistant was i'm looking at our bro broadcast assistant at the moment jenny she was very lapsed probably fired or maybe killed <laughs> um but it was recorded sometime in 1983 here's aztec camera there we go that was aztec camera with walk out to winter recorded live here at the bbc at some point in 1983 he slightly jazzed it up there that one didn't he, he? had a little bit of a kind of restaurant tinkle mm. in the middle a kind of pizza express moment you there <laughs> <laughs> a very nice one though yeah tinkly winkly That's from good. roddy that must have been close to when he actually recorded the track for real that you reckon he actually made it up then you reckon yeah that was the first time he played it wow yeah. yeah, because what? his voice is so similar to the actual track, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's good. That's that's a lovely little uh, piece of melodicism there. From this is uh, Adam and Joe, by the way, on BBC Six Music. We're filling in for Sean W. Keaveney for the next two weeks. Coming up to the end of our first hour here. Yeah, it's four minutes to eight. 
just in case you need a time check, in case you're 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 leaving for work, or you're late maybe to pick up Grandma to take her to the swimming pool for her therapy swimming session. <laughs> She's getting old, and the floatiness of the water eases her pain. No, she loves it. Um, coming up in the in the second hour, Joe, I want to chat to you about a few uh, advertising logic holes. Ah, you know. Are you someone, I mean, everyone enjoys doing this, don't they? Just uh, spotting advertising logic holes, on particularly commercials on television. Yes, there are a lot of them about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want Advertising is lies. Is it? Yeah. What are you talking about? I'll explain to you, you know, during the next record. Okay, this is exciting. Uh, also, I, I've got a few things that I chopped out from the papers over the summer. Is the summer over? Uh, no, there's going to be a second summer, listeners. Who says? I do. Really? It's what happens every year in Britain. You get a bit of summer at the beginning. Yeah. And then you get a really horrible rainy period. Then you get a bit of late summer. Right. In September. Because for a while there, it was going pretty well, you know, and, and you were thinking, yes, the global warming's kicking in and everything's getting cosy. And then it now it's just gone down the lath. Yeah. So anyway, all this, uh, all this exciting kind of chat still to come uh, here on the show, folks. But now... Lisa, I've confused myself. Which one are we going to play now? Super furry animals. Super furry animals. Okay, there you go. Excellent. Is this a new one? Yes. Excellent. Show your hand by the super furries. The super furry animals there with uh, Show Your Hand. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, now it's time for the news. Who's reading the news today, Adam? Adrian is reading the good news. Half he's dealing with the bad news. What, what an enormously appropriate choice of song. Yeah, because... Yeah. What, why? Get this. Get this. Come What's on. the name of that song? Hanging on the telephone. Yes, that's right. And we've got a caller hanging on the telephone. Uh, ho -ho. Yeah, to play uh, something called Serial Thriller, which is a segment we've inherited from Sean W. Keevney, who's gone off on holiday to Italy, I believe. But we've got Dave in East London on the line. Hello, Dave. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, mate? I'm uh, pretty, pretty chirpy for a Monday morning. Yeah, pretty especially such a yeah. miserable one. You're on the train, right. How's the behaviour on the train this morning, Dave? Have you got any uh, school children playing tinny MP3s on their mobile phones? No, I'm just walking to work at the moment, so trying to avoid the traffic. <laughs> what, who, what, how come I thought he was on the train? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, just walking, walking on the way to work. I thought he was on so the there's, train. There's uh, quite a few busy <laughs> roads around. So. <laughs> really? Well, take, you take care. Don't go running out into the road, and if you're kicking a football and it, and it rolls into the road, then look carefully before you step out. I'll make sure I do. That's yeah. good advice, Joe. So, Dave, in, in this segment we're kind of new to, uh, because yeah. um, obviously we're just filling in here. Can you explain what the logic is? Um... I think basically just play two two songs whilst you go and get your breakfast. Uh, right. Oh, we, so we get, get some breakfast. Two lengthy songs. You have something decent and hearty for your, for your breakfast. Cereal thriller. It's spelt like bowl of cereal. Wow. You see? Yeah. This is good. Uh, well, that that. And so you've chosen two tracks, Dave. I have. Yeah. Are um, they are, are they long ones? Because I like to go to a particular restaurant in Spain for breakfast. <laughs> I don't think you quite make that. Oh. Um, one, I think one's, one's about three or four minutes, the other one's getting into around a five plus minutes, I think. Okay. It should be a good time for you. Dave, you've gone for Stone Roses and Nirvana. Uh, explain your choices. You haven't gone for the obvious Stone Roses choice. Uh, no, well, I went to a party the other week and uh, got back at about four in the morning quite quite drunk and kind of pulled these CDs out I hadn't heard for a while and just realised they're, they're really good tunes, so I uh, thought I'd email them in to get them on the radio. Yeah, you've gone for a Stone Roses track from the uh, second... Second album, coming album. Yeah. Um, Love Spreads you've gone for. And, That's it, yeah. And which is the Nirvana track? Uh, it's called Serve the Servants. It's the first track of the Neutra album. Uh, oh. so it's, it's just a complete belter, so... That's yeah, worth listening to. Well, good, good, good work, Dave. Uh, you don't win anything, of course, because that's illegal. Oh. Um, yep. But you know, we'll 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 just send you happy thoughts. Brilliant. Is that brilliant? <laughs> Can yeah. I just say though, Dave, that the scene you described before when you returned home inebriated, <laughs> it sounds like you might be a disgrace, a disgraceful. Uh, some person. people would probably say that, yeah. You, you know. Uh, so why don't you send us something <laughs> to make up for it? Exactly. What are you going to say? Hello, us? Dave. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just avoiding cars still. Are you Are you in the road now? I'm just getting onto the pavement again. Well done, mate. Yeah, cars on the <laughs> road, people on the pavement. Here we go. So why don't you introduce your first track, Dave, uh, and then uh, we won't have to bother. Well, the first track, is it the Nevada track? It's going to be the Stone Roses. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dave. Hey, thanks a lot for, 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 for calling in. And don't forget, listeners, you can no do worries. the very same. We'll give you the details after the first of Dave's tracks. Cheers, Dave. Cheers.
What a messy ending to that record. That's disappointing, isn't it? I mean, who was that? You would have thought they would have cleaned it up a little bit. Was that- who was that? That was Nirvana. That's typical of them. Yeah. Are they on drugs or something? Hey, guys, guys, that was good. The ending is a little bit ragged. It's just messy. Why don't we do it again? One more time. Come on, chaps. You know, be positive, and, uh, let's all go out on a-, a all at the same time at the end. What about that? Nah, That's what the producer that's should have cool. said. They're too cool. Yeah, they just need a decent producer, and they could have been really an impressive A success. Fan. Yeah. This is Adam and Joe, uh, on Six Music. We're here filling in for Sean W. Keaveney for the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's time for our record of the week. Not our record of the week, but Adam's record of the week. Well, this is a single that's coming out this week, isn't that right, Lisa? Now, is this real? Have you genuinely cho chosen this as your favourite record of the week? Or uh, is it a st <laughs> has it been kind of foisted well, upon you by a powerful <laughs> and secretive cabal of record industry manipulators? No, I don't think so, because the record of the week, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, is, is a single that happens to be coming out that week, right? Yeah, Which is chosen, yeah. or a band, yeah. right, uh, or around, I see, yeah. yeah. And it's chosen by the show to be played. So it's a happy coincidence that my favourite band, pretty much, uh, ever, Spoon, from Austin, Texas, ah. um, happened to be releasing uh, a single, I think the first single from their new album, Gar 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 Gar. One, two, three, four. No, Gar 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 Gar. Five Is there gars. a difference between yeah. four Gars and five Gars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly yeah. less articulate baby. Yeah, well, no, it's just a determination to say Gar. Is really? Increased, yeah. You might accidentally say Gar 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 Gar, but Gar 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 Gar. That's very different. That's a real statement very of intent. Anyway, it's an amazing album, and they're, uh, and they're a fantastic band. I've liked them for so for so long, and they're like weirdly underrated in this country. I don't know why. If their if their sound is sort of not fashionable in some way, maybe they're a bit too arty for the popsters and a bit too poppy for the artsters. I don't know what, but they're really good. If you if you aren't in the spoon camp, then get in because it's fun here. We're having a good time. There's lots of good music, spoon cakes and uh little spoon drinks we're having i went to see them playing at the borderline last week and they were amazing one of the best gigs shot into my top five uh, really? best gigs ever yeah yeah wow i'd never been to the borderline before what an amazing venue it's like um uh where is it it's it's sort of around denmark street kind of area uh and it's it's just really small a couple of hundred people maybe mm -hmm. and it looks like a sort of texan bar so it was appropriate for the spooners you know sort of tex-mex type joint and uh it was really small the sound was brilliant and it totally suited their sort of stripped down muscular uh indie pop sound but they've got a real funky edge to them as well anyway this single of theirs which is called the underdog i think is produced by john bryan um so it's unusual for them john bryan did a lot of uh really good film music for people i think he did the music for eternal sunshine of the spotless really Mind. that's a good film yeah very good film yeah uh and i think he used to be in a band with uh, oh no, the trail is coming up next, I'm being told. Okay, so we'll, we'll play the track after the trail, but I'm just sort of setting it up a little bit more. Uh, probably more than I need to. Tell us about the trail. Who the, was the trail produced the trail, by? The trail was produced by, uh, uh the Toby Harris. Really? No. What film music has he done? He's, he's done the music he's the for music for the Magic Roundabout Final Facts CGI film. Two. Final Facts 2. Yeah. And, wow. And, uh, and have you seen this trail live? It's amazing. It's I saw I saw it in the trail box and <laughs> near Denmark Street. Yeah, really. Wow, it's brilliant to see trails performed live. But but here's a here's a pre-recorded trail. There you go. Oh, that was that was good though, wasn't it? That was a great trail. Can you imagine seeing that? Live? Yeah, really. It had a funky edge to it. <laughs> uh, but really good. No, but anyway, so, so sorry, I was rambling about Spoon before, um, and we're going to play this. Just track. play the Spoon. No, but I just want to say it's unusual for uh, the album. It's not typical of the album. Really? Yeah, because it's got these sort of um, horn sections in it mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'm saying, I, I don't know exactly what I'm saying. What are you saying? I don't know <laughs> what I'm <laughs> What's saying. What's the matter with you? What I'm saying is it's really good. Uh, but if for, for some reason it wasn't to your taste, that shouldn't put you off buying the right, album. Right, right, right. what I'm saying? We get it. Let's hear this spoon and, and talk further after it. All right. A much better ending than the N Nirvana song. <laughs> it's still a weird ending, that one, I must say. A lot of their endings are a little odd. But that's The Underdog by Spoon from their fantastic album, Gar, 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 Gar. Hey, and thanks, listeners who've texted us. Karen in Somerset says, This is an amazing song. I love it. Well done, boys. Thanks very much. I, we can't really take credit for actually creating the song. Oh, we can, in a way. Which, part, which bit did you do? Uh, I did the ending. The drums and, <laughs> right. and, and the, the horn. That, that's my least favourite bit. Is it? That's my least favourite bit. Well, you're 
and not a very nice man. <laughs> Is that what you're coming back with? Yeah. Hey, um, well, I should thank everyone who's texted us. If you want to text us, it's 64046. Uh, we love getting texts. Seriously, I particularly, Joe Cornish, I love getting texts. You love texts, don't you? I just love them. They make me tingly all over. You like texting as well, then. I do like texting. If he had your number, uh, uh, listener, Joe would be texting you right now. Yeah. he absolutely yeah. loves it. Oh, my God. Lol. What's up? That kind of thing. Ruffle. Ruffle. <laughs> all that kind of business. Um, and you can email us, Adam and Joe, all one word, dot six music at bbc.co.uk. We li we read and, um, yeah, just read, in fact, all texts and emails. Uh, just on a final word on Spoon, if you enjoyed that, and I do encourage you to uh, investigate further. They played The Hub on Gideon's show last Thursday. Wow. Um, here on Six Music, and you can... The Hub is just a stylish BBC Six word for a room. It's a room. It's, it's a room with a with. It doesn't even really have a stage. The stage is only elevated a couple of inches from <laughs> from the floor. It's got some microphones in it. That's what yeah. qualifies it as a hub. And bands have scribbled all over the wall in a way that would get them detention at school, but for some reason gets them, you know, praised here at BBC Six Music. You can listen again to that spoon session at uh, bbc.co.uk forward slash Six Music. I'll be doing that this evening. And if you want to investigate even further the world of spoon, you can go to my website adam-buxton.co.uk where you will see hey. a uh, video that i just made for the band for no reason whatsoever wow. like i didn't get commissioned to do the video uh, i don't know the band oh, so you've done it voluntarily i just did it as a fan i'm gonna watch it on 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 your internet during this next what are we are we going to the news next lisa calvin harris next, calvin harris next. uh yeah so why don't we have calvin harris right now this is called merry making at my plane <laughs> That's Calvin Harris with Merrymaking at My Place. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for a news update. Who's who's reading the news, Adam? Uh, two of my favourite news readers, mm -hmm. Adrian and Harvey. They're brilliant. Hooray, that was the uh, Pigeon Detectives with Take Her Back. It's a miserable Monday morning uh, on Six Music. No, it's, it's miserable outside of Six Music. It's not <laughs> miserable on Six Music. Wait, about the Pigeon Detectives. Yeah. Are they actually pigeons employed to investigate you know certain cases or are they just detectives involved with I've no idea man tracking down where does that pigeons? name come from is that some kind of detective novel we don't know we're going to do some research into that anyway um we're adam and joe i'm joe cornish who are you i'm adam and joe yeah uh we're here on six music you can text us on six four zero four six or email us adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk in a second, we are going to have a kind of a test. It's not a competition. No, 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 because we're not allowed to do them. It's a test of Adam's movie knowledge. And you at home can listen in to this test, and you can test each other at home. Yeah? We're going to be playing you a clip of a DVD commentary. It's going to be a director and star team. Mm. And uh, this, is a, this is a clip taken from their commentary over their latest movie. There are a couple of kind of idiots yeah. uh they sort of know it and enjoy it and basically you at home can guess amongst yourselves who they are and adam you're gonna guess here in the studio aren't you what's the name of this feature it's called uh the crap commentary corner are you sure you can say that word the c word the yeah because uh i get, i think you can can and we here's, lisa here's why and we're not sure we it's, think it's we think it's uh wavering there it's on the cusp maybe we should change its name right now it's live on, on air well i was gonna the say the cruddy commentary corner mm, how about that i don't know the cruddy commentary corner well i was gonna say that that it's um surely okay because i i was watching this uh tv ad the other day it's for a, a breakdown company and it stars vinnie jones mm. and he's driving through the countryside in a rolls royce a gold advert rolls royce yeah and he's got what i presume is his daughter in there she's dressed up like a little uh, fairy princess and uh, first of all vinnie in the rolls royce gets stuck behind a tractor whilst going through the countryside oh, oh, oh no he gets annoyed bloomy neck blooming oh, oh bottle bank and then he gets stuck behind a load of sheep uh before he breaks down in his rolls royce yeah? i know this advert and, and kind of the scenario uh invites him to swear doesn't it 
Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Vinny's the king of swearing, right? right? He swears better than anybody in Britain. Oh, that's the point. That's the point. He is the why. Were you confused about it? I was confused because uh, the the Damien Moore. He's like the poet laureate, but for swearing. Right, and he stops himself swearing. I'm so thick. I don't get any of these things. And then basically, what happens is that finally the roller breaks down, and he uh, uh, phones up the emergency services, and he uh, uh, they say, "Whereabouts are you, so we can come and get you?" He looks around for a sign. He says, "I'm in a village of." And then the sign he sees says Crapstone. Which is a real, uh, village. Yeah, right. Is it? I think it must be. And then he looks at his daughter and, and he thinks, oh, you know, I can't say Crapstone. So he says gingerly, I have no idea. But what, what, <laughs> what is the logic? That he can't <laughs> he say- He can't pollute his little fairy princess's mind with such foul words. Even if it's part of a legitimate, uh, town no, name. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's one of those difficult situations that parents find themselves in. But the word- When driving through small villages. But crap. Is that- Don't say it again. That's one of the problem that's ones. The, the same reason we can't say it on BBC Six Music, <laughs> the Queen's favourite music channel is the same reason why Vinny has confusion over it. So he can't say oh, oh, a word like crap, even if you it's part- You said it again! Even if it's part of a, a place name We're not going to be here word. tomorrow morning. Crapstone, he can't even say that. No, he can't. You did so it four times. what does he do when he wants to set off for a drive in the countryside? I'm just starting. <laughs> um, should we play some music? Here's Basement Jacks. There we go, that's uh, Basement Jacks with uh, Good Luck. Is she saying good luck, good luck, good luck in the loo there? I don't think so. No. Her name is Lisa Kekwala. 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 And that is a very cleverly designed record by Basement Jacks because it'll be played when uh, anyone has a leaving party from their job. Or if they... Good luck, good luck. Uh, and that's going to bring them in a lot of dough, a lot of revenue. Yeah. And that's all Basement Jacks care about. Yeah. Money. Good luck. Good luck in the loo there. Watch out when you poo there. No! No. That's a bad word. All right. Hello, listeners. Uh, happy Monday morning. This is BBC Six Music. We're Adam and Joe filling in for Sean W. Keaveney for the next two weeks. And it's uh, a, a test time. We can't call it a competition. No. It's kind of a test, and it has nothing to do with any kind of competitiveness at all. I'm going to play Adam a clip from a DVD commentary uh, from a recently released film. And this clip features the director and lead actor... Uh, making fools of themselves. Adam, yeah, what? How easy is this one? This is pretty easy. Because sometimes you can pick these things out and they're very obscure. Yeah, but people always get them. I have enormous faith in our listenership. Right. Listeners out there, I think their knowledge of, of movies and music is vast and yeah. highly informed. Okay. You Let's know, this is a BBC audience. They're, they're clever people. And listeners at home, if you want to help Adam, give him some suggestions as to what this might be, then feel free. Uh, you that can... That Mr. Bean Toe... Yeah. Why have you, do you, I mean, would you, how would you book Mr. Oh, Bean so? Well, it's, just, well, it's disgusting. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. It took six million quid on its opening weekend. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. And the thing is, people want to go to the cinemas these days. They just don't want to think. No, they just no. do not want to think. They no. just want to sit there numb. Yeah. For two hours, however long it is. They do not want to be provoked into a reaction. Six they... millions. That way, too. Well, we were in the wrong game, didn't we? There we go. There's, uh, there's clip number one. Six millions. You now, can text 64046 if you want to help Adam figure out who, who that is. Although I've got a pretty good idea about at least one of those. Really? Two. Yeah. What about Lisa, our lovely producer? Do you know who that is? Haven't got a clue. Haven't got a clue. It's a recently released film. Didn't do so well at the cinema, but did very well on video. And this writer and actor combo are famous for their filth-ridden commentaries. Yeah, they're good value commentaries. They're though. very, yeah, the they're commentaries the are almost better than the films yeah. in some cases. So let's hear the second clip. Uh, from this mystery actor and director combo. Give your listeners a little spin on your American accent there. Okay, um, um, uh, what do you want me to say? I can, I, I can do the American accent, I can do it a little bit here, I can... Well, how does that sound? Does that sound, does that sound no, okay? No, 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 do an American one, not no, Welsh a, one. No, no, that's American. Don't do Welsh, do American. Uh, no, that's American. Mother, well, okay. father. Um, uh, no, that's no good talk nah, about that. Right. You'll be all right. You'll crack on out. Listen, yeah. at the end of the day, every British person out there is cracking on. You know what I mean? It's well, good you know, climate out there. Well, for Statham, the can, Statham can do it. You know, I'll, yeah. you know, I feel confident. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. There you go. I, I think we should go to a trail and a track before we find out whether you can guess that one. There's a little clue in there, though, isn't it? Statham, that's presumably Jason Statham they're talking about. Yeah, but he's not in the film. No. He's not in the film they're talking about. If you want to help Adam figure out who that is, remember, text 64046. Uh, here's a bit of a trail while you think. Uh, this is Eardrum Bass by Wire. You're listening to Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We're in the middle of playing Cruddy Commentary Corner, uh, our kind of uh, game 
that we play here in the studio where I play Adam a clip from the audio commentary of a, of a DVD of a popular new film and he has to figure out who is talking on it. Yeah, and yeah? I think I've got a fairly, fairly good idea. Now, a couple of listeners have texted in uh, with suggestions to help Adam. Uh, we got to thank Julian in Paddington and Ollie as well. Shall we hear a third clip of these goons before we see if you've got it right, Adam okay, Buxton? Then, yeah. So let's hear clip number three of this writer and, no, this actor and director combo. You know Morph? I'm oh, going to yeah. do a film out of Morph. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that might get me somewhere. What are you? Tony Hart, take Hart. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm serious. The thing about Morph is, how are you going to offend anyone? Why are you laughing? <laughs> so, Tell you what, kid, that's what... Of, the image of Morph running about with a big empty It could be my future doing Morph, you know what I mean? What? There we go. So who is that Goonie, uh, director and star combination? Okay. Well, I think I'm pretty sure that one of them, at least, is Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer? Uh, the actor well known for popping up in laddish roles in films like, uh, Football Factory was he in? Uh, correct. Uh, The Business? Correct. Uh, he hosts a, a show about football yobs on Sky. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> Called The Real Football Factory. So it's on Bravo, maybe. I he was remember. in Severance as well. Severance? Oh, I haven't seen Severance. Yeah, I tried to watch Severance. There's a number of his films I haven't seen. <laughs> and then, so that's the actor. Who was the director? Well, I'm assuming that's Nick Love there who directed him he he's kind of the scorsese to uh danny dyer's de niro yes and um they, they often team up in films they were in the business and the most recent one uh which i'm assuming this comes from mm -hmm. was the sort of jaw-droppingly reactionary uh mm. sort of revenge fantasy mm -hmm um what was it called it's called outlaw outlaw with and that, Sean and that is the correct answer to the game the test that was indeed uh uh, Nick Love and Danny Dyer from the commentary of Outlaw. And even if you don't uh, like their films, listeners, I do recommend you get that out and have a listen to the commentary. I had to, t uh, I spent hours lifting the swear words out of that. Right. It is the most sweary and aggressive DVD commentary in history. And they pretty much go through most of the critics who were negative about their film. By name. Yeah. And explain what they'll do to them <laughs> if they ever meet them and explain in, in with very blue language exactly why they're wrong about their brilliant film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm slightly on their side. Really? You like Outlaw? I don't, I wouldn't say I like it, but I don't think it's necessary, necessarily the sort of postulant load of rubbish that, that people think it is. Well, it's pretty morally reprehensible, I would say. Yeah, it's, but it's, it, it, of... it's, it's a fantasy. Uh, yeah. It's not supposed to be real, I think that's the idea, but it's pretty horrible to watch. Well, it's not supposed to be real, but there there are a number of long speeches in it which are supposed you to seen stir it? you, yes, which yeah. are supposed to stir you into thinking, yeah, that's got a point about sort of the state of Britain and what you should do to sort it out. I learnt a lot of new uh, Cockney rhyming slang as well from listening to it. None of which we'll be able to hear this morning, I No, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Can we get away with Cockney rhyming slang? I wouldn't imagine. No, you can't get away with anything. Anyway, that was our little game. <laughs> and uh, we've got to say thanks very much there to Julian in Paddington and Ollie, who, if there wasn't a, a national competition crisis, would win something. But because of the ongoing crisis and all the lives at stake and stuff, they can't. What would we have given them? Uh, a pile of CDs? I would have... You no, know, here's what I would have given them. What? A TV. A TV? Yeah, a plasma television. Really? 1080p or 1080i? Uh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and <laughs> also, I would have given them a flight. I would have given them an Xbox 360 Elite. Would you? Yeah. Uh, a special Halo 3 edition. Right. Yeah, with a, like a etching of Master Chief on the front. <laughs> Master yeah? Chief? What's and that? I would have given them a copy of Crackdown. Is that Ainsley Harriet? What? Master Chef? That's Master Chef. Oh. Uh. That's a different that's, game. That's not even Aisley Harriet, though, on MasterChef, is it? It's hey, this is uh, Adam and Joe on, on BBC Six Music. Is it time for some more Six Music? Coming up to the end of our second hour, we've got one hour wow. to go, and I still I still have a few advertising logic holes that I wish to discuss. Brilliant. With you, There's something to look forward to. Uh, and now it's time. What, what have we got next? Have we got a bit of gossip? Yeah, we have. Yeah, with Jealous Girls. That's editors. Hey, hey, shush. Sorry, man. Oh, Lisa, you cut it out. There was monk action there. Oh, no, there was a bit of monastic the, action. The monks just suddenly stopped. That that track was called An End Has a Start. Mm. I want you to think about that, Joe, for five seconds. Okay. <laughs> there, Done it. there you go. Uh, uh, this is Adam and Joe here on, on Six Music, filling in for Sean Keaveney. Uh, now, Joe, I was talking about um, strange advertising 
phenomena earlier on. Here's something else that I found quite by chance. I was going to talk about a an ad for um, kind of washing powder, concentrate, liquid, whatever. Yeah, you see, we can't say the brand names here on Six Music, can we? No. So you have to describe them in a roundabout way. Yeah. And in the course of doing a little bit of research for this, trying to find the ad online and stuff, I came across this website called... Uh, well, I probably... I can't even say the name <laughs> of the website, can I? Probably, but it's a, it's a website where you can uh, ha- you can put product reviews for things, right? It calls itself a shopping intelligence. Website. Okay, so members of the public like review products, and and you can sort of cross reference what people think about yeah, things. Exactly, yeah. and it appears that uh, real members of the public, mainly ladies, has to be said, uh, have put these incredibly in-depth reviews for things like washing powder sounds good on this website and uh here i'm gonna uh, quote for you now what appears to be a genuine customer review uh, from this website which features um uh, product reviews from from members of the public this one is for a well-known fabric conditioner right mm-hmm. but i've changed the brand name uh to waft <laughs> w-o-f-t okay uh so you know as so as to avoid any kind of legal punishment problems and as you'll see it's it's quite a passionate and in-depth confessional that this lady has written Let's about this fabric conditioner i am a real stickler for my washing to smell nice so believe me i've tried and tested many fabric conditioners in my time i love my clothes to smell clean and that of my kids i can't stand them to smell of nothing About two months ago, I could not get my usual fabric conditioner. Well, I nearly had a heart attack and a paddy in the store right there and then. What's a paddy? It's like a heart attack. Right. It was like a fix to me and I needed it. Anyway, rather than throw myself on the floor having a tantrum, I scoured the shelves for another and I happened to come across Waft Warm Wind. I made that name up. Fabric conditioner. I twisted the cap off with anticipation and sniffed for England. I was pleasantly surprised. It was not one that I had tried, as when I find one I like, I tend to stick with it. So I decided to take a risk and buy it, hoping and praying that it would smell as good on the clothes as it did in the bottle. Anyway, as soon as I got home, I decided to give it a try and threw a load in the washing machine with new waft warm wind, made up name, conditioner. After a long wait, I pulled the clothes out of the machine, and the smell hit me straight away. It was gorgeous. I was very impressed, but I still had to wait for the clothes to dry to see if the smell stayed within the clothes, as most of the time it tends to disappear after the clothes are dry. Are you relating to this, (laughs) Joe? Yeah, kind of. Yeah as well as the clothes sometimes feeling like cardboard. Mm. When the clothes were dry, the smell was still there, (gasps) and all the clothes were lovely and soft, with the gorgeous smell still attached. Mm. Woohoo! I found another one. And then she goes on for quite a long time to uh, list a number of bits of practical information. She breaks down the merits of various different fragrances on offer in the waft range. For example, she says, the waft warm wind, made up name, conditioner, is a lovely yellow colour and smells exactly like a summer day walking through a meadow of flowers. That's the best I can explain it. It's such a lovely smell and so fresh. And she seems, and she goes <laughs> on and on and on. And I was thinking, this surely must be written by the people who work for Waft. Yeah, it's an inside job. But it's not. But it's not. It's not because I re- later on she said if she she goes on to talk about some other Waft products and she says you know it's overpriced and you should avoid this particular one and wow. I'm only going for Waft Warm Wind. It's just extraordinary. Isn't it amazing that people like that exist? Well, I was just thinking, what would this lady have done and uh, before the internet? You know, would she have just written all her thoughts down and? handed them out on the street would you like to know what i think about waft warm wind i've written an essay about it and here you can have it it's free uh take it away with you probably because she sounds mentally upset (laughs) doesn't she i mean she's going around supermarkets sniffing bottles sniffing them for england yeah and then she's praying to god (laughs) about (laughs) detergent yeah what is the great the great god gonna think of about those prayers i'm sure we can mention the name of the website can't we it's called chow there you go it's called chow uh and and it's got loads of customer reviews they're pretty enjoyable reading folks let me tell you why not go and uh, check them out and add your own there's a lot of people out there who are mad who are insane
and, <laughs> and you can join them. Right now, uh, we've got a free play. This is, I chose this one myself, folks, music-wise. This is a track from one of the best albums to come out so far this year by a wonderful band, The Shins. The album is called Wincing the Night Away, and this is one of the best tracks on it. It's called Sea Legs. There we go. That was, uh, that was, hey, you better tell us what that was, Adam, because I don't know the difference between the name of the track and the name of the band. That was a band called Iron and Wine with a track called Boy with a Coin. And, uh, they're a great band. And I love a bit of Iron and Wine, you know. Who doesn't? Not just to listen to, but as a snack. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been texting us. We we, we got quite a lot of texts now. We were a bit worried early in the show. I wasn't worried. You're obsessed <clears throat> with text. I love text. I just like to know that someone's listening. Yeah. And that, you know, somebody might be enjoying our waffle. But people can listen without automatically having to text. It's the nineties, Adam. It's all about interactivity. <laughs> right. Come on, wake up and smell the digital <clears throat> <laughs> Um yeah, and you can text us on six four zero four six uh if you want. Now you know Harry Potter? Yeah, I do. I know him very and well. And you know the joke about his wand? Well, no. Well, you know, like, every lame journalist in, in the world makes a joke about Harry Potter's wand. Okay. I can imagine, yeah. And how many Harry Potter films have there been? Five? Something like that. And so, you know, you would have thought Harry Potter wand jokes would be kind of exhausted, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well... Don't you think? It's like Santa's sack, though, isn't it? You think it's perennial? Yeah, it's always going to be a source of I would have thought, if you walked onto the Harry Potter set and made a wand-based joke... You wouldn't get well, you wouldn't different. get much response. No, surely not. Especially after Daniel Radcliffe, the young lad who plays Harry Potter, yeah. has appeared on the West End stage in Equus in the nude and uh, given a masterful performance. Apparently, imagine how many Harry Potter's one jokes were made while that was on stage. A lot. Seven. A lot. Every publication making Harry Potter's one jokes. Yeah. Which is why I was very surprised when I uh, opened up the American magazine Entertainment Weekly and read a set report from the new Harry Potter film and read the following. And this is a little glimpse of life on, on the set of the new Harry Potter film. Mm. A few hours later, Oldman has nailed his scene Gary and begins is. bantering naughtily with his castmates. Yeah. Have you noticed, he asks Jason Isaacs, how long my wand is? Yes, Isaacs volleys back. It expands when it's warm, doesn't it? Radcliffe listens and grins broadly. Can you believe that exchange actually happened on the set of a Harry Potter film? After 15 years of one jokes, <laughs> Oldman decides that's the funniest thing he can come up with. Isaacs laughs at it. Well, And then maybe... Radcliffe, after months on the stage naked, enduring comments about his wand, it says grins well, broadly. He grins broadly. That could mean anything, though. He's probably just sort of... What's Radcliffe thinking inside? Thinking, oh, He's thinking, oh for goodness God. sake. <laughs> Come on, old. Put up with this for years. <laughs> Mind you, I tell you why he's grinning. Yeah. Because of the amount of money he's got. Right. He's just constantly grinning. In fact, the director has trouble making him stop grinning <laughs> for the dramatic scenes. He can't believe it. Yeah. The amount of money he's made. He deserves all of it. My God. And the fact that in those films, he's kind of popular in school. Because let's face it, in any normal school, Harry Potter would be an outcast. Mm hmm. A terrible, tortured, bullied nerd. Why? Because he's a nerd. Right. Yeah. But he's got magic powers, though, and that makes him cool. Magic money powers. He's a celebrity. He's in got that a magical world. wallet. Listen, he's a good guy. He is a great guy. He, my, my son loves him, and he's turned really? my son onto the idea of reading the Harry Potter books. Has he? And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, rewarding, magical world. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a lot worse than Potter out there, let me tell you. For, yeah. For children. Oh, they, yeah. Why don't they think of a new story? Why? What's your... For the film? a real I have. Vendetta, it's the same story. <laughs> or, listen, so just a all... new teacher, the guy you think is evil is When, uh, Voldemort turns up, nearly kills him, doesn't... It's the same every you're time. You're obsessed. Isn't every it? Th th here's a little insight into Joe Cornish, <laughs> <laughs> listeners. Yep. When we're not on air, it's pretty much all he talks about. He's just... Harry Potter. He just rants about Harry Potter and takes the mick out true. of it and sort of says things like, Harry Potter! Harry Potter. That's all they say in Harry, Harry Potter. And that's what and that's what he says. He says, that's all they say. Harry Potter. He goes on and on about it. That's all they say in Harry Potter. And everyone's like, yeah, Joe, okay. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but you know, that's all they say. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> but my one comment was good, wasn't it? Come on, Man, I like thing. all your Harry Potter comments. I'm not, uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> hey. Harry Potter. Potter. Harry Potter. I can't take any more of it, audience. I've stopped seeing them. Okay, music time. It's, it's Le Rhythm Digital time, ladies and gentlemen. Harry Potter. <laughs>
There we go, there's the beat with hands off She's Mine. This is Adam and Joe on Six Music, uh, filling in for Sean W. Keeveney in the last 20 minutes of our show. I've got a little question for you, Joe, mm. about minicab etiquette. Right. It's probably taxi etiquette as a whole as well. When you're in a car, uh, or minicab, probably minicab car stroke, you know, more than a black cab, I'm saying. Right. Because there's not the big dividing window. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the guy is playing music fairly loudly, his choice of music, either mm. a CD or the radio or whatever. What's what's your uh, rights there? What's the right situation as far as asking him to turn it down or turn it off? You know, I mean, because you are paying the fare after. Yeah, all. I'd say that as 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 a paying customer, you had every right to ask him to turn the music down. Right, right, right. Have you right. tried to do that? Well, no. I always feel intimidated about it, um, and I and I I got a phone call from someone the other day, and they were in a uh, the back of a cab, and they're trying to speak to me, and and while they were speaking to me, the guy put on his music incredibly loudly, and it just got louder and louder throughout the phone call until I could hear my friend saying, "Sorry, could you turn the music down a little bit." And uh, I could hear the music dipping for about three seconds, and then it came right back up again. And the guy just wasn't having it. And I thought, that's, yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because the other thing is, if somebody else is paying for the journey, mm. right, if they've sent a car for you, there's, I sometimes definitely get a vibe off the guy like, you've got no rights because you're not paying for this journey. So I'm going to do exactly what I like in the back of my, you know, in my car, and you can deal with it. This is my domain. Well, I wouldn't take it. Yeah, I'd assert your rights. What would you make say? him turn it down? I'd say, I'd say, excuse me, can you turn that down? Yeah, and then what might he say? He'd say, "You're not even paying for this, you, you long man. I'm. Uh, this is my car, and I'll do what I like. You, you're. I hate you." I'd say, "Stop the car! Would you? Stop the car! Pull over! Stop the car! <laughs> Stop the car!" Yes, <laughs> like that, a bit like a darling. Stop the car! Stop the car! Uh, all right. And then I'd fight him in the street. Would you? Yeah, bare knuckled. What, do you get into, I, cause I, you know what I'm like. I, 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 I usually cycle everywhere. And when I don't, uh, when I'm forced to take a, a taxi or whatever, if it's raining, almost invariably I get into some kind of contretemps. And mm. it's, it's a nightmare. Anyway, listen, it's time for uh, a track from the album of the day, uh, which is Richard Hawley's album, Ladies Bridge. Is that rude? No, it's got to be rude. It must be rude. A yeah. ladies' bridge. <laughs> Don't dwell on uh, it. That this track is called Serious. The album's out today. Album shopping fans, uh, and Richard joins Mark Riley on his show this Wednesday from seven in the evening, and you can hear further tracks from this album throughout the day. Here's Richard Hawley with Ladies' Bridge. That's Richard Hawley, and that track is called Serious, and the album is called Ladies' Bridge. And Susie has texted us to say that Ladies Bridge is a Sheffield landmark, so it is not a part of a lady's anatomy. It's trail time. BBC Six Music. Gruff Reese from his album Candy Line, that was Cycle of Violence, and that was a kind of a free play uh, from me, Joe. So if, if you liked that track, then you probably like me, and we'd probably get, get on quite well. And maybe we should hook up. Yeah. What if they didn't like it? What if they... Well, then, let's just call it a day. I yeah. mean, let's just move on and... Forget and, about it. Yeah, I think we're quite different, really. What kind of things would absolutely put you off a person? Like, uh, if someone listed a, a load of music that they didn't mm, like mm, or a mm, load of... Mm. Uh, that you didn't like... I think the most off-putting thing in a person is if they don't clean their house, they just use Febreze on the whole place. Mm. I think that would probably be my number one thing. And then once they've put it on, they sniff it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really enjoy the smell. That's the same kind of person maybe that um, thinks that putting their socks in the tumble dryer mm. is as good as washing them. Really? Yeah. That's a good tip. And just warming them up. Blasting Steaming them. them. Just giving them a Steam blast. Steam the socks. Yeah, yeah. That's good. It's like what you do with vegetables to keep the nutrients in. Right. Right? Give them a little steam. Yeah, give them a steam. So listen, we've had a complaint come in via email that we're not reading out any emails. That's true, isn't it? And that this is a bit rude to our listeners who've bothered to email. So here are some emails. Uh, hi, Adam and Joe. My name is Connor. Today I'm up early just to listen to you two. You should feel special because I have nothing else to do today. Maybe you could suggest some things. I'll do the same for your show. Adam, talk about Grindhouse film. The Grindhouse film by Tarantino. I don't really understand it, but I want to know more. Joe, do an impression of Cher by gargling water and singing at the same time. I'm available on my mobile if you are ringing anyone of the <laughs> show. I'd love to speak to you about all sorts of chum. 
that's what they feed sharks. And he's left his e his uh, his mobile phone number. That's a very in depth. Yeah. What are we going to do? Are we going to respond or? No, we're just going to read them out. <laughs> Here's another one. Hi, Adam and Joe. Been enjoying the always entertaining inanious banter please could you do a banter on some new films what are rubbish tar paul from glasgow p.s i thought your spo spoon video was excellent adam hey thanks a lot paul i appreciate that here's a uh, um email from emily she says something similar she says welcome to six music that's nice thanks emily i'm so excited you're going to be here for two weeks you might not be so excited after two <laughs> weeks after two days <laughs> yeah. i was just wondering if either of you have seen waitress yet and if so what you thought of it uh no neither of us have seen it unfortunately emily i went to see it though she she says and i thought it was so awful it made me feel sad good luck with the show that makes me kind of want to go and see it and uh, see what you're talking about though emily and i'll do my best before the two weeks are up yeah all right anything else there, agree Joe? with you no that's pretty much the only the only ones we've had printed out can you do an impression of share while gargling yeah what's a share song i believe in life after love <laughs> Is that there we it? go. <laughs> That's an impression of Cher gargling. That's what she does. Yeah, right? exactly. But she go. doesn't hit her neck in a dangerous. I think way. she probably did in the studio. You injure yourself, man. And the other thing he wanted us to do was what? Oh, talk about Grindhouse. Well, <laughs> you've seen Grindhouse. I've seen Grindhouse. Yeah, I saw Grindhouse in Los Angeles. Did you? With Quentin Tarantino himself. Nice bit yeah, of name yeah, dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Nice. I'm leaving name droppings all over the studio. You certainly are. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it very much. What's the question? What, well, he just wanted to wants chat it explained. about it. He wants it explained. It is uh, extraordinary. You saw it in its original double bill form. Yeah. Right? Because in the, in the UK, it's been split into two separate films. Is that right? Maybe we should talk. I don't feel I can talk about it in a succinct way. I think maybe the... Uh, the emailer should maybe you know whittle down the question a bit more precisely well, we don't necessarily have to be super succinct at this moment do we do we <laughs> no um i i went to see a screening of it also it, in its original form the other day i don't know if you've seen this folks but it's a uh, it's a film that uh, quentin tarantino and robert rodriguez have made or rather two films uh robert rodriguez has made one called what was it called it's called planet terror planet terror and tarantino's contribution is called death proof and there's that sort of nominally in the style of kind of early 80s late 70s exploitation if, if you i'll tell you the yeah. key behind it if you're a friend of quentin tarantino yeah yeah Go on, yeah which you are he has a private cinema in his house right and he has his own projectionist and he's got a collection of about 300 prints mm -hmm. uh and if and he you know on weekends he he has kind of movie nights yeah and he'll have friends around at his cinema and he'll show a couple of ancient classics and he'll run tr old trailers before them because he's got a big collection of trailers as well. Is he? And before them, he'll show that uh, little piece of film that they have before Kill Bill and uh, Planet Terror. You know the one that goes. It's like the American version of. Yeah, and it says exactly. It says preview, and so he'll run that, and he'll run old Coca-Cola adverts. And and Grindhouse was an attempt to recreate one of those evenings at his house. Only minus the RZA sitting in the front row with a big bong. Yes, and Edgar Wright. And Edgar Wright. Running yeah. in with nachos. Yeah. But um, the weird thing about it, though, is they sort of abandon that, don't they? Especially halfway through Death Proof. Yeah, well, they kind of scr artificially scratch the films yeah. and give them, like, vinegar stains and pops and scratches to make it seem like they're old prints that have circled the world for years. Right, and Rodriguez sort of sticks with it for... He's Planet consistent Terror. throughout his film. Yeah. There's even missing bits, missing reels, like weird splices, but yeah, uh, Tarantino kind of abandons it during his. Now, when I saw, maybe you can explain this to me, but Tarantino's uh, just uh in a in a in a nutshell is about some girls who are terrorized by a kind of crazed stuntman stuntman mm. right and um the first half hour of this film uh now i'm gonna say what i thought thought about it and you can correct me joe and explain it to me if if you think i'm insane but the first hour, half hour of this film follows the, these four girls being terrorized and it's for me it was incredibly boring torture and it seemed like a parody of a tarantino film all lots of kind of crazy sassy dialogue and stuff happening in this bar you're thinking what's going on and there's a cameo from robert rodriguez and tarantino in there uh, oh no no from um eli roth is in there isn't he yeah the director of cabin fever hostel and hostel 2 and the inventor of the torture porn subgenre <laughs> there you go yeah um 
And j- just when, just when you, uh, well, just when I was personally so bored that I wanted to kill myself, suddenly there was an explosion of amazingly intense action, uh, and all these girls are, are, are sort of dispatched. And then the film seems to start again with a whole new cast, whole new mm. set of characters, but the same, the same baddie. And he's forgotten about all the scratching the film up and stuff. It just turns into a, a, a completely different thing, like a, a, almost a different genre of film. Or, uh, uh, and, but again, it's like half an hour's worth of total boredom, as far as I could tell. And then 15 minutes at the end of the most exciting stuff I've ever seen in my life, pretty much. What did you make of it? I agree. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> no, I thought it was brilliant. I highly recommend it. It's not out in Britain yet, but it's coming out on DVD in America. So if you're naughty, you can import it. It's worth having a look at. Naughty and porty. Shall we have some more music? Why not? Here's the Kaiser Chiefs with the Angry Mob. Kaiser Chiefs with the Angry Mob. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., bright and early, uh, for the breakfast show again. We've been Adam and Joe. Coming up now is Gideon Co., who's got Ry... What are they called? Rilo Kylie. Live in the hub. But that's exciting, <laughs> that's isn't it? That's very exciting. They're a fantastic band. Yeah, but uh, have a lovely day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>